Hello, everybody. Today, I would like to open a new gambit. Budapest gambit is a very aggressive opening as blank, which could become one of your best weapons against White's d2, d4 first move. So, to d4, knight f6, and c4, group of Hungarian chess players, especially Stefan Ebony, Zygmunt Barash, and Gula Brer, developed here quite interesting opening line, which started with move e7, e5. Black is immediately intending white's pawn on d4 and ready to sacrifice his pawn on e5. So this gambit could be quite surprised many of your opponents because it's not so clear what for black decided to sacrifice his center pawn. So the most direct reaction of course d takes e5 accepting this sacrifice and also white has couple of different options as well. So after d takes e5 black usually is playing with his knight to g4 immediately intending white's pawn on e5. So as a result, let's say in case black is winning back this pawn, white center is not that strong as before. Also black is getting quite active peace play. So black's knight on e5 stands pretty good. So second knight is coming to c6 as well. Black is not going to keep waiting and developing his bishop, dark square bishop, or to c5, or to b4. Light square bishop is also quite easy, could be developed after d6 and later on coming to f5. So all black pieces are quite good post. Semi-open e-file is also quite serious intent over the white center. So, let's first of all examine white's different options, different options in this situation. So, because, as I said, d takes e5 is the main opportunity, but also, many of your opponents could decide, okay, something surprising is coming along. So, just let's play something similar like d4, d5, lock in the center. In that case, black is not going to close his bishop after d6. So we would like to bring our bishop to more active outpost. So in that case, bishop firmly could be developed to c5. So look, bishop is having great outpost on c5. After bishop c5, white is not going to use the pin of the knight on f6, let's say, move like bishop g5 will be made by a simple combination. I believe that all of you who were looking at my first lectures about Danish gambit and about the Evans gambit could easily recognize the classical combination in this position. So bishop on g5 is hanging and black is coming with the Nice shot over the white's weakest spot in the position, pawn on f2. So after bishop takes f2, king takes f2, and knight is coming any of g4 or e4, white's bishop on g5 is gone, and black's position is definitely winning. So knight g4 check, king e1, and queen take g5. Black is not only have an extra pawn, but also white skin lost castling rights. Same problem white is having even in case they play knight c3 after d6 and bishop g5. Once again, bishop takes f2 could be deadly surprised white skin. 
So bishop takes f2, king takes f2 and knight g4 once again. The bishop on g5 is gone and black is getting decisive positional and material advantage. In case white is developing knight f3 and after d6 once again trying to play bishop g5. Doesn't work at all. Because after bishop takes f2, king takes f2 and knight e4 check. Black at the same time forking. King on f2 and bishop on g5 and getting material advantage. So in all this line almost always bishop g5 is extremely dangerous for white. So what white has to do in that case then bishop cannot be developed on g5. So white has to play very passively. What does it mean that white has to play something like e3 but not many players would love getting such a passive position in the opening. So that's why this structure is quite favorite for black. So after let's say short castling, bishop e2, black is just finishing his development with move like knight bd7 and after short castling pushing his f pawn let's say I could play knight e8 and after knight c3 f5 Black's position is slightly better already. Black is having very good prospects on the king side. So d5 is not so great in this situation as we see now because Black's bishop immediately gets very strong outpost on c5 and this completely destroying White's normal development. So, in case of d5, white tried some different opportunity. First of all, let's understand that move like e3 is not allowing white to pretend on any advantage. After e takes d4, what white can do? e takes d4 will be made by simple bishop b4 check. And after move like knight c3 and short castling, black already finished his development when white is still having a lot of trouble. So he's king in the center. Rook e8 is coming with a check. White's center will be attacked very soon after d7, d5. So once again we could understand that white is not fighting here on any advantage. Black is probably already in slightly better position. Despite the fact that white is having center right now Sense to better development, black is obtaining just better position. So after e takes d4, we could try, of course, move like queen takes d4. Unfortunately, this move is against the rules. So don't move your queen too early in the opening. After knight c6, white's king queen becomes just very nice target for black pieces. Queen d1. d5. Black is immediately opening the center. Also aiming to come with his bishop to b4. White is trying to prevent threats. a3 but all black pieces immediately coming to the game. Bishop e6 and Black is forcing, just forcing white to capture on d5, which leads to completely open position where black's developer advantage is most significant factor. C takes d5, knight takes d5. Now black is intending to bring his queen to f6 and after long castling, white's queen will find himself in a very difficult place because not so clear where to get out with the queen from d1. White is trying to exchange queens after e3, e4. Knight f6, queen takes d8. 
Rook takes d8. Now we can realize that instead of playing with the pieces and trying to complete the development, White just played with his pawns. And as a result, Black is having now four pieces in the game against all white pieces which are still on the back rank. So white trying to play something like bishop g5, avoiding immediate disaster, but knight d4, aiming knight c2 check, bishop d3, and after knight b3, white has to resign. Knight from b3 is attacking, rook on a1, at the same time white's bishop on d3 is completely hanging and will be lost. So this spectacular game which played be between Curic and Carries in training tournament 1935 shows what special ideas we have in Budapest Gambit. So let's continue. E3 doesn't work and let's look for other opportunities. So we just saw that after d4, d5, bishop c5 is very nice position for black. E3 it will be met by e takes d4. Move like knight c3 also doesn't solve any problem because after e takes d4 once again White has to move his queen, let's say queen takes d4, and after knight c6, black is gaining extra tempo, so white's queen has to go home, let's say queen d2 or queen d1, and in that case, move like bishop b4, fighting for the center squares, intending knight on c3, and also d7, d5, look, we just started to play the opening line and already black is having three pieces development when white is not getting any control over the center square so all d5 and e4 squares and the black's hands so white immediately lost his advantage so in that case we came to conclusion that probably the only try for white fighting for advantage is to accept the sacrifice on e5. So, let's back to the critical position after d takes e5. So, funny enough that this position after d takes e5 for the first known game happened in Budapest 1896. This was a game between Adler and Marazzi and Black has two opportunities in this situation. So mostly analyzed by all Hungarian players move like knight g4 which is still according to the theory is the best and the main <coughs> main continuation, so intending immediately knight takes e5. Indeed, later on, in late 20s, were found additional move, additional option for black just to play knight e4. This is extremely sharp continuation. When black is offering complete, I would say, unbalanced game for white. So in that situation, white is having an extra pawn and black is not intending to win back this pawn, but black is trying to use the aggressive position of his knight in the center for creating the strong attack over the white skin. So in our third lecture, I would like to pay your attention to this knight e4 continuation. But our first two lectures will be based on standard and classical way knight g4. 
after night G4, what is having plenty, plenty of moves. First of all, let's understand that it's not so great to play F4. So white is trying to get control over the E5 pawn, but in that case, let's say after Bishop C5, black is immediately intending all dark squares. Knight f2, knight e3, queen h4 check in tens. So <coughs> black is continue developing very very fast when white is having more problems here to finish his own development. In some game happened move like queen d4, which is I would say also very very aggressive so <clears throat> after queen d4 white is not just covering the pawn on e5 but also don't forget that knight on g4 has been attacked it looks quite complicated for black to create here the counter counterplay because standard ways are not a, I would say so playable in this situation. Indeed, black is ready to go for the real sacrifice and played d6, which is creating very nice situation. So after white is captured on d6, black continued develop his pieces. Knight c6. Queen has to go, queen d1, and after bishop takes d6, we can reassess the situation. So black is having three pieces in the game, and for white, it's not so easy to play now. Let's say, move like knight f3, will be made by standard and classical combination. Once again, over the white's weakest spot, pawn on f2. So black is playing, look at that, knight takes f2, wow, at the same time attacking the queen and the rook, force white to capture the knight, otherwise rook on h1 is gone without any compensation, and in that case look at that, the queen on d1 is hanging, so we are coming with a nice shot, bishop g3 check, White has to resign already. H takes g3, queen takes d1, and white is having not enough compensation for his queen. Once again, we see that how important the development here. Black is having pound down, but because all his pieces already completely developed, and queen is just move away from f6, bishop just move away from getting another great place on f5, so what is having a lot of troubles, so we can try playing something like queen e4 check, but it cannot solve all the problems, bishop e6, finally white is playing knight f3, Queen takes d6. Black is intending to play long castle and to create the threat. Queen d1. Knight c3 is forced. Long castling. e3. At that moment we cannot play queen d1 of course, because knight from c3 is controlling the square. Black is play knight f6. Now queen c2 will be made by knight b4. So white is getting 
out with his queen and playing queen b1. Why queen b1? Because already here, queen move like queen h4 will be made by knight b4 and how to stop knight c2? Check. Quite difficult. Let's say move like knight d4 trying to cover the c2 square will be made by simply answer c5 and what is in big big trouble. So queen has to go to b1, queen b1, but look at that situation. We are just pawn down, but all our pieces development. We finished and castled our king, so only last we have to bring this bishop to the game, bishop from f8, and trying to trap the white queen to d7. At the same time, we could move queen d7, intending bishop f5 and intending bishop b4. All our pieces ready to fight. Bishop e2, bishop f5. White, we are absolutely sure that bishop f5 doesn't work in this situation because e4. Indeed, after knight takes e4. Knight x e4 and bishop b4 check. Wow, all black pieces in the game. So, black is ready to complete his development after rook to e8, and exactly like many times it happened in the games of greatest players like Anderson and Morphy. Black is not counting the sacrifice when opening king in the center. So we just continue keeping initiative, develop our pieces, and material doesn't matter so much. The most important is domination of our pieces. After bishop d2, black would play, of course, rook h to e8, and white has no any solution against bishop takes e4. King f1 doesn't solve any problem. Rook come to e8. a3 trying to send away the bishop from b4. Bishop takes e4. Queen a2 and finally, finally, look all black pieces in the center, centralized. White skin on f1. All white pieces are standing just word. So bishop takes f3 is solving the problem. <clears throat> now we have two options. First of all, bishop takes f3. Rookie one checkmate. G takes f3, same, check on h3, king, e, king g1, and of course we can just capture on e2, but much more brilliant here, rook d1, check, and after bishop takes d1, rook e1, check. Once again, we see that in the gambit situation, when you get very strong development advantage is extremely difficult for your opening to build the strong defense. So in that case, when you open files in the center, when you bring all your pieces to the game and start creating threats over the weakest spots in your opening's position, it's extremely difficult for your opening to stop your attack, like it happened in that game. So, after, if you queen d4 tries, once again, what I'm saying that after few tries, like queen d4 or f4, white came to conclusion that it's not possible. Not possible to keep this pawn so easily. And 
why it started to look for more classical ways. So at the same time, trying to complete his development and maybe, maybe making some trouble for black to win it back the spawn. So for this intent, white is having two options. Option number one is to bring the bishop to f4. Covering e5 pawn and option number two is to play knight f3 immediately. First of all, I would like you <clears throat> to get more familiar with the bishop f4 line. Black is continue knight c6 once again attacking white spawn on e5 so it's almost forced white to play knight f3 and it's not so easy to win back this pawn so black is bringing his bishop to b4 with a check white has two interesting opportunity one is knight c3 this move happened in the historical game between Akiba Rubinstein and Milan Widmer in Berlin 1918 tournament, which we will study on the next lesson. And the classical move, Knight BD2. So in that case, White is trying to win this bishop on B4 after A2, A3, even allowing black to win back this pawn on e5. So after queen e7, this is the most natural continuation, white is playing a3. Here you can surprise your opponent and just making very nice trap. You are not forced to capture immediately on d2. Pay attention to that. First of all, you can eliminate his pawn on e5, play knight takes e5. From the first sign it looks like white could just capture black's bishop on b4. Unfortunately for, for white this is the most famous trap in chess history and happened in more than 30 games which played with this line. So a takes b4 move will be made by knight d3, smoother it made, look at that. White's pawn cannot capture on g3 because it's pinned by black's queen on e7. So nice, made in pattern, knight d3 check. So, this position happened in many, many games. And as I said before, it's one of the most famous traps in the chess history. Almost nothing white can change by playing knight takes e5 because once again black is playing knight takes e5 and white even in this position cannot capture on b4 because knight d3 check and mate. So you can ask, okay, all is great, but why can I cannot I remove first of all black's knight after bishop takes e5 so what would happen in that case so bishop takes e5 is quite okay move of course but black is immediately playing bishop takes d2 with the check so exactly on time we are trading out dark square bishop for white's knight and after queen takes d2 and queen takes e5 Black is obtaining a fairly equal game. Pawn is coming to d6 or b6, bishop is coming or to e6 or to b7. So white is not having any advantage in the center. Black is having very good placed queen in the center on e5. Short castling, materially equal, black is fine. So, so nice to solve all the problems. 
the best continuation of course for while here is to play something different to play e3 and in that case black is forced already to capture on d2 and after queen takes d2 and d6 bishop p2 short castling short castling and b6 his position is only slightly worse so bishop is coming to b7 then maybe black is playing a5 white is of course having two bishops but position is quite closed and it's not so easy for white to open it and as we know only in open situation two bishops is a significant advantage so that is the main idea of bishop f4 line and finally I would like to pay attention to the situation when <clears throat> white is playing something different option so in the late, late 20s Alexander Lokin came with a quite interesting idea so he said I'm ready to sacrifice back this pawn on e5 so let's play just simply move like e4 attacking the knight on g4 and after knight takes e5 f4 knight can go to g6 or to c6 let's say knight c6 and after knight f3 we come to the very complicated situation so look white is having three pounds in the center all controlling everything but black is having quite nice peace play so bishop is coming to c5 pawn is coming to g6 this bishop could be developed to g4 second knight could go to a6 or d7 so knight from b8 also black is having press black could organize some pressure over the e file let's say knight c3 d6 bishop e2 short castling once again pay attention for white is not so easy to make short casting so white has to think about that problem as well so rook is coming to e8 or black could attack white center by challenging move f7 f5 so even here black is having quite interesting opportunities to create the counter attack so in the next lesson in the next lesson i would like you first of all a, to be more familiar with the outcome of knight f3 which was one of the main variation for many many years in case of knight f3 black has to be very very careful because move like move like bishop b4 is not solving any problem since bishop d2 bishop takes d2 and queen takes d2 still very difficult for black to win this pawn back so black is almost forced in this position to move his bishop to c5 and after e3 white's bishop is not going to be developing on f4 anymore create the pressure over the pawn on e5 knight c6 okay so with that position we are going to continue our next lesson so thanks for watching the first part of the budapest gambit and follow me on the second lecture about this quite interesting and spectacular budapest gambit series thanks and see you next time